Today, these small creatures can be seen frolicking in the seas, digging complex tunnels, hanging out in the trees, or maybe even doing tricks in your living room. While they may seem small and unassuming, these ferocious animals come from an ancient line that reached its peak with giants more than 30 million years ago. This is the rise and fall of the giant mustelids. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufo, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're going to talk about extinct giant mustelids. Mustelids include extant long hunters such as weasels, otters, and wolverines. In addition to stemming back tens of millions of years to the Oligocene, this ultra-successful family is also the largest in the order of carnivora. The diversity of habitats, ranges, diets, and features of mustelids today is the greatest of any carnivoran family. They have colonized almost every ecological niche from marine ecosystems to tree canopies throughout the world, except, of course, Antarctica. One thing that all extant mustelids have in common is their reputation for ferociousness. While today's mustelids are on the smaller side of the spectrum, the mustelids of the past tended towards gigantism. Around 31 million years ago, Mustaloids began to diversify into four distinct groups. Mephididae, which includes skunks. Iluridae, of which the sole living species is the red panda. Procyonidae, which includes raccoons and coatis. And the stars of our show, Mustelidae. This is a prime example of adaptive radiation, when a large number of species evolve from a common ancestor. Giant mustelids started showing up around 10 million years later. <laughs> Enhydrictus galactoides, which lived in the Mediterranean during the Pleistocene, was one such giant mustelid. Even though it weighed only 10 to 15 kilograms, it's considered giant because it's over twice as heavy as its closest living relative, the 3 kilogram South American grison. Larger still was the African mustelid Ecorus ikakarin, a leopard-like hypercarnivore which stood 60 centimeters at the shoulder and was built very different than the mustelids we know today. Unlike today's mustelids that have short limbs and can only manage short bursts of speed, Ecorus had long legs built more like a leopard's and the upright stance of an active hunter. This predator was adapted to stalking and running, like modern dogs and hyenas. Miocene predators often had generalized hunting traits, putting their tactics somewhere between feline pounce and grapple and canine chase and kill. The theory here is that a great abundance of prey didn't demand specialization in order for Miocene predators to snag a meal. One of the most complete and largest fossilized mustelids that we've ever found is that of an Eomelivora pivetoi. Located in Spain, this Eomelivora pivetoi specimen was found with the partial remains of at least five other individuals. Eomelivora was hypercarnivorous, meaning that more than 70% of its diet consisted of meat. It was even more hypercarnivorous and larger than wolverines, today's largest land-dwelling mustelid, though it was a distant honey badger relative. While most mustelid species diversification happened in Eurasia, mustelids did wander to almost every part of the world. In North America, there was the giant Megalictus ferox. This enormous mustelid was shaped like a ferret, but had the size of a jaguar. It weighed up to 100 kilograms and lived during the early Miocene, about 20 million years ago. Megalictus's skull was massive and not even just by mustelid standards. It would have been about the length of a jaguar's skull and as wide as a black bear's. Its teeth were adapted to crush bones, like their distant relative, wolverines. You hear that? That's moose bone breaking in his teeth. A wolverine's third upper molar is actually turned inwards like other mustelids, 
except theirs is way bigger. And this is designed to help them hold onto and crunch bones much more effectively, especially because most of their meals, like this one, are frozen. So he's grabbing onto that meat and twisting and turning to pull off pieces of frozen flesh. Now, wolverines don't mind at all if their meal is frozen. Frozen meat is what they're built for. In the wild, if you got this close to a wolverine on a carcass, that would be a true miracle. Oh, I bet. You'd have to be, and it might only happen once in a lifetime. Well, he's extremely patient and I'm grateful for that. While Megalictus once held the title of largest mustelid, in 2022, a larger species was discovered in Ethiopia. This enormous otter, which lived about 3 million years ago, was named Enhydriodon omoensis and was the most giant of the giants. At over 200 kilograms, E. omoensis was the size of a lion. Based on analysis of its fossilized tooth enamel, E. omoensis likely ate a combination of terrestrial and aquatic prey, though it's not clear if it was a hunter or a scavenger. Either way, its teeth would have been perfect for chomping down on hard mollusks and even crunching bone. Along with many other large-sized carnivores, Enhydriodon omoensis likely went extinct in Africa during the Pleistocene transition, 3.2 to 2.6 million years ago. Some scientists believe that their extinction was triggered by the warmer climate of the Pliocene transitioning to the glacial ice ages of the Pleistocene. Another theory is that coexistence with our early human ancestors, Australopithecus and other hominid species, spelled an end for these larger and dangerous carnivores. While climate change may have killed Enhydriodon omoensis in Africa, it may also be responsible for the first burst of mustelid diversification. It all began with climate shifts that resulted in the emergence of grasslands about 33 million years ago. As Antarctica drifted to the South Pole, global cooling made carbon dioxide levels fall. This atmosphere was ideal for specific types of plants and especially grasses. Forest ecosystems began to transition to the grasslands of the early Oligocene, and as a result, about 60% of terrestrial mammals went extinct. Grazing ungulates took over and became larger, and so did the carnivores that preyed upon them. On the flip side, smaller rodent herbivores could hide in the grass and take refuge in tunnels underground. This smaller prey gave rise to smaller carnivores, including mustelid ancestor Paleogale, which was cat-like and weighed about a kilogram. From there, the floodgates were open to the evolution of all of the weird and wonderful mustelids we know today. Considering their rap as ferocious killers, one can only imagine how terrifying it must have been to come toe-to-toe -to -toe with a puma-sized weasel. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.